Hi, this is Captain Mike. Uh, today we're going to do um, an experiment on making uh, clay slip or casting. Now, the reason I'm going to do that is I need some high fire slip. I have a lot of low fire slip, but lately I've been using um, some high fire glazes and I have plenty of uh, slip that's uh, that I make out of river clay and it's red fires red and it's nice but I want to see what some of these high fire glazes do on white uh, bisqueware you know how it changes the color so I don't have any high fire uh, porcelain would be what I would would get eventually uh, but in the meantime I decided to make some uh, so we're going to start off, but I'll show you what equipment you're going to need to do this. Then I'll show you um, the supplies you need. So we'll start with equipment. Uh, you'll need a scale. Uh, it's not really important, but it, it's a nice way to start. You'll need a graduated uh, measuring cup. And um, you will need uh, probably a whisk, Dollar Tree purchase. And spoon. Another Dollar Tree purchase. You'll, you'll definitely need a uh, sifter and you will need some containers. Uh, I don't know how many. You just get out a bunch of containers. I keep all kinds of containers because you're going to be wanting to put the slip back and forth from one container to another. And you'll also need a way to cut your clay. Uh, and of course, most important for this uh, project is a what is this thing? It's a blender. Aha. See, I get it. Even an old guy like me can get it. It's a blender. Okay, so uh, I use these blenders for a lot of things, but this is going to be uh, uh, very important for this project. So, which first thing you want to do is you want to get your clay. Oh, excuse me. I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Uh, one other piece of equipment that you will need is molds of, of various sorts, depending on what you want to mold. Okay, that's the last of the equipment, I promise you. Uh, supplies you're going to need, of course, some clay. <clears throat> you know, uh, a clay body. This is porcelain clay. In, in my case, I could use any high fire clay I wanted to, buff or whatever. There's a gazillion of them, but uh, this fires white. I know it fires white. Uh, and uh, you just pick you up 25 pounds of it from your local supplier. They won't have the slip probably, but they'll have this. And so you can make the slip. So you'll need that. And of course you'll need uh, uh, to start with a cup of water. Uh, I always keep some extra water because I'm going to do this in increments of one cup and one pound of clay. I already go ahead and I've already done these. So you'll have a pound of clay and a cup of water. That's the formula. And uh, I mentioned the whisk, I mentioned the spoon maybe, and this little dealy here to cut your clay with, okay? I think that's about all the supplies that you're going to, you know, equipment you're going to need. Uh, and uh, the supplies is what I was telling you about. I'm getting all confused here, folks. So just kind of hang with me, okay? It's been raining for about three days and can't get outside and do anything, and I'm about to go bananas. So, like I said, you need the clay, you need the water, and pretty much that's all the supplies you're going to need, except maybe a little sodium silicate. And we'll get to what that does and why you might need that in just a little bit. So, with that said, We've already weighed out our clay, so we don't need these, these scales here. We can put them away somewhere. And uh, we will, uh, we've already prepped our molds. We won't need this until we get a little further along in the process. And so what I do is I'll take my blender and I start off with one cup of water and one pound of clay. And the reason I do that is, I'm not exactly sure how much this blender is going to hold uh, when it starts blending all this stuff up. I know it'll hold probably two pounds and two cups, uh, but I'm not real sure, so I didn't want to run it over. So I just broke it down. And what I do is I put top on it, take this little jewel off right here, uh, the little top thing here, so I can feed the stuff down through it. Now, I'm just going to, before I cut the blender on, and I'm not going to, you know, make you watch me do the whole thing. We'll just do a few seconds of the blender running. But I take out and pinch off pieces of this pound of clay, and I drop it in there. And I do that 
as the blender is running. Now I can put a few pieces in here because it's not going to hurt anything. And then I turn the blender on. And I just repeat this process with the blender running until I have it to the amount of clay I think I need uh, turned into slip and the consistency as close as I can get it. Uh, and we'll talk about consistency in a minute and what you can do to achieve your consistency. So with that said, all you do is I pick a, just, you know, put it on low and uh, that's low and just turn it on, stir something. to it in little bunches. And you can get in there and make sure it all gets blended up. So that's all you got to do. Now I'm going to blend the rest of this up off screen and I'll be back with you. Okay, this is take two of uh, de decanting this slip, if you will. Uh, just a second ago, I uh, tried, as I was talking and filming, I tried to remove this from the uh, blender. I should have unplugged it, but I didn't. And somehow it came on and it scattered slip all over everything. But you guys didn't want to see that, right? Okay, all right, okay, I'll show it to you. And one of my containers that I chose. Oh, that wasn't a, that was a mess. Won't come out. We have to start this all over all right. again. Enough of that. Now, I've got the slip here, and it took two pounds of clay and uh, two cups of water. And it got it about the consistency that I like it. Uh, it will firm up some as it sits and you'll have to thin it. But right now this will work for this, this project. Uh, this container here in this particular blender size will hold the aforementioned amounts. So what you do is you get your, your Dollar Tree uh, sifter in any kind of a container you think will hold all of your stuff and you and, and go ahead and sift it and you're going to need to sift it. Uh, this blender works better than my previous blender, the one that I did the initial experiment with to see if this was even possible at all uh, and there's just very little, if any, uh, it blended it all up, all up the pieces. So what we have here is some uh, slip ready to be poured into a mold. Now, I'm going to touch on something before we get any further, and that is what to do if you've added the two cups of water to your two pounds of clay, and it's still too thick, like this. You can, you can tell the thickness here. You see that's, that's pudding consistency versus this, which is, is buttermilk consistency, let's say. All right, you've already got plenty of water in this thing. Uh, what I do, is, this is what the sodium silicate comes in for. It's, it's, an, it's a, a chemical, an additive that will thin out your slip without uh, adding water to it, which means that it's not gonna hydrate your molds quite as much, but it'll give you some uh, uh, workable uh, slip. And so what I do is I start off in a small like this thing like this with about that much. You say this doesn't look like it's going to do anything, but it will. And uh, you can use this spoon or you can use a whisk and just start stirring and watch it. And it will it will get thinner and thinner. Now I may have to put some more in this. Now, this is the first time that I have tried to put sodium silicate in a uh, uh, a, a uh, porcelain slip. In fact, is in this one, it's doing exactly the opposite of what it should do. The sodium silicate in this one turn is turning it exactly opposite what it's supposed to. It's turning it back into uh, into clay. That's odd. Let's stir it some more and just see what happens here. Okay, I'm going to stir this for just a little bit offline, I mean off of out the camera, and see what happens because it's now turned into cottage cheese consistency. That's the first time that's ever happened. Uh, low fire slip, I do this all the time, and it uh, it it works exactly like I was telling you. But let's just see what this does, and if I say it's a no go, we'll just ignore the sodium silicate in this situation. If you need to thin it, put some more water in it. That works. It's just this was just 
kind of a little idea that I thought I would share with you and it does normally work. Now let me go ahead and stir this some more and see what happens. And we'll come back and then we'll pour this into my molds. Okay folks, I've learned something here. Now, this does work. What I had to do, and don't ask me why, I would just imagine the speed of the agitation. Uh, I put this stuff, let me don't make the same mistake, unplug this rascal. I put it back in the blender and I blended it. That's all I did. I didn't add anything else to it. That one little uh, uh, tablespoon of sodium silicate and it did exactly what it was supposed to do. Uh, you guys saw how it looked. It looked like pudding. This stuff here now is thicker. I mean, excuse me, it's thinner than the uh, one pound to one cup, which is fine. It's not much thinner. It's just a little bit, just a tad. Now, the, th the, th the thickness or the thinness of your clay, your clay slip, just depends on what you want, what you want to work with. This is, this is something you'll have to work out. How much water, how much sodium silicate. Uh, as I said, the sodium silicate, all you're going to gain out of that is, is not as much water in it. There's not as much stuff to absorb into the clay body, excuse me, into your mold. And uh, uh, it just kind of works better if you're going to be using your mold over and over again pretty rapidly. Uh, but yeah, that scared me. You guys have seen uh, uh, two things today that, uh, you know, do as I say, not as I do kind of stuff. Uh, now, just to give you an idea of what we're fixing to do here, we're fixing to pour this high fire porcelain slip that I would just made into some molds. And uh, uh, two of all the molds but one uh, I made, and they're just standard uh, plaster. Now, this is a, a low fire. Uh, little guy, little lizard, and you know they they all biscuit about 04, uh, but then you um, um, you the glaze depends on whether you're going to do an 06 glaze or a uh, a five glaze or a six glaze, which are much much higher. This little rascal here, it, 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 it cones six, turns into a puddle, ruins your kiln shelf, could possibly ruin the bottom of your kiln. Uh, so be very much aware, and here's why you have to be very much aware. This is one that I poured earlier from the earlier experiment just to see if this was a viable experiment. This one is porcelain. It worked out pretty good. You clean this, the edges off of this one and you lay them down, you can't tell them apart. So make sure, please make sure that you keep your, uh, your the bisque items either marked as to what they are or somewhere where they won't get mixed up. Ask me how I know. Uh, so that's the, the deal there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, this is just what they look like. Uh, that's just a, a, a raku, western raku kind of deal. Not real raku, it's what we call raku. Uh, now what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm going to pour is a bowl. Or a, yeah, no it's not a bowl, it's actually a, a jar, a little round jar. I made this mold and uh, I will take the uh, slip that I just uh, put the uh, sodium silicate in and I just pour it in and if I remember correctly there may be enough in here to fill this up and there may not I think I'm gonna have to add some of the other and there are all kinds of uh, it doesn't hurt to mix this either uh, there are all kinds of videos on YouTube showing you how to pour slip not so many to tell you how to make it uh, there are some that tells you how to make it from scratch dry materials. I didn't have the time or the patience to do dry materials. All right, this one right here is leaking. It's terrible. It does that occasionally. We just let it leak. It'll stop in a minute. Uh, the next one that we're going to fill up is going to be this little rascal right here, and it makes these little lizards. And this is why it's important that you have your slip thinned out pretty good. Uh, let's see if I'm good enough to pour this in these little tiny holes. Is these little lizards have uh, little legs and toes and things, and you want to make sure they all work. All right. I don't know why that other mold leaks. And every once in a while, it does that to me. I have not an idea. Okay. Now, once you pour it, you're going to have to over pour again. Now, I have uh, another mold right here. I'm going to go ahead and pour what I have left of this or part of this in there, then I'll try to clean this mess up and we'll come back and talk about it some more. We'll just pour this thing right quick. 
this is a little leaf face I made this mold all right those are poured up I've got a little bit extra left that I can use to top off all of these and uh, I may even pour a mold or two for them through but that's where we are standing right now so I'll be right back when I get this mess cleaned up and uh, we will I'll show you what some of it unmolded looks like so hang in there okay let's wrap this video up I'm still waiting for the, for these molds to solidify uh, as I said early earlier in this video get online and there's a couple of excellent excellent videos on pouring slip what you're looking for and when to pour the excess slip out of these molds we won't get into that because this this video really is just about making some slip uh, and anything else I throw in here uh, is just kind of extra uh, don't, uh, it's going to be the video is going to be too long but to show you that this is a viable way to make slip this was made from my my first attempt at doing this this is the mold here it leaked profusely which by the way has stopped leaking but you see this is a neat little a neat little bowl it has not been bisque it is just simply cl a clay uh, uh, porcelain clay um, jug bowl whatever you wish and it's waiting to be fired and I showed you one of these little guys earlier and the mold makes two they need to be cleaned up now with that said before I get on to the closing part of this you need to make sure you keep this separate from any low fire slip that you have that is a white low fire slip a good way to do that is uh, one of these pistols that you can get from Amoco or yeah, Emma, however you say Amoco, I guess. But anyway, it's a graphite pencil that won't burn off. And you can write on the bottom. Now, any any system that you want to have is fine. But you can write, you know, like HF for high fire or just a 6 for uh, what you're eventually going to glaze it to. So you won't get them mixed up. I, I can't stress that enough. I've, I've cleaned off more uh, kiln shells than I should have to and re-washed them simply because of my stupidity. Uh, oversight whatever you want to call it uh, now back to these as I mentioned you will have to keep topping them off until they have gotten the thickness this is about eighth of an inch whatever thickness you want and once they get to that thickness then of course you will pour this back into your container then let it dry and once it dries you can take it out of the molds and uh, you know you see what you've got uh, I went ahead and poured up an extra little test uh, I do a lot of these little test uh, glasses, if you will. Now, the last tip I'm going to give you on this, and then we're going to we're going to call this video uh, actually a success, uh, is when you get ready to wash all of your uh, bowls and stuff. Now, here's something. Just because I'm just cheap, okay? I'm just cheap. I can't stand to throw anything away. Everybody else would take this outside and throw it away. Don't throw it in your drain. It'll clog your drain up. Clay, plaster, all that will clog your drain up. But I'll, I take my bowl, I mean my, 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 man, I'm having a hard time on these things. The uh, uh, glass part of this uh, uh, blender, and I wash it down, and I pour all of the water that has the clay body in it into a container. Now, I'll put this in a glass container with a top, uh, and if I want it to thin out a little bit, I'll just leave it like this and it'll settle and I can pour some of the water off. You can reuse it. I mean, you know, you don't get much, but if you're doing a lot of this, it can mean a lot. So that's my only little tip. That, and uh, uh, please don't uh, 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 do some of the stupid things I've done and please don't mix your low fire and your high fire up. Can't stress it enough. And uh, if any of you people watching this video really know what that sodium silicate did initially, uh, give me a comment below and let me know. I've put it, lots of it and lots of it in low fire slip. I just put what I think I need to be in there and I stir it up with a big old spoon and it just smooths right out and it's nice and liquid. Had to put it in the blender to do it, but in the blender it did, it did do what it was supposed to do and it thinned it out great. So that's it. That's the only tip I got. You can make high fire porcelain slip or stoneware slip or anything you want to make out of a clay body if you have the hard clay that you were going to throw on the wheel and but you want to do some casting uh, in, in, in the molds either you make or you buy. That's it. I'm Captain Mike 
and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm out of here.